Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. My name is Paige Lucier Johnson, and this is my Zoom radio show um, called Heart is a Compass. I've been doing this radio interview show series since 2005, and one of my first guests was Sherni Spruill, who is here again today as I transition from a radio format into a Zoom um, format where the technology is changing. So are we. We're all upgrading. We're all evolving. <laughs> um, Sharnice is one of my favorite people in the world and has uh, been part of my spiritual journey and my spiritual awakening since the very beginning. Um, I met her when I was first kind of coming into stepping out of that spiritual closet in uh, New York City. And we met in a Reiki class, I believe, or a nutrition class, something like that. And she and I, our souls immediately were like, we love each other. <laughs> and, um, and it has, and, and we have never stopped. Uh, she's one of my favorite people. She has an amazing Facebook group um, and she is a light language speaker and an archangel channel. She has activated hundreds, if not thousands of people with light language activation. And she helped me in my process of becoming a channel and speaking light language as well. She walked me through it and held my hand and the incension symptoms and all of those different things that are scary to talk about to other people that aren't going through the spiritual process. Sharnice was there for me and she's there for countless numbers of people and she opens her heart to so many people she has weekly if not monthly channeling sessions where you can call in and work with the guides with her so um, absolutely if you don't follow her yet please do with no further ado i'd like to introduce and welcome my dear friend sharni spruill welcome to the show thank you it is such a pleasure to be here Paige. <laughs> <laughs> So as you know, my radio show is called Heart as a Compass because spiritual, the spiritual path is often lonely and it's often difficult to follow our intuitive guidance. And the path and the mantra for me for many years has been heart as a compass, something that I talk about and try to use to gauge what I'm doing in my life and where I'm going. And even in the darkest moments, I try to use my heart as a compass. I love hearing about stories about people's spiritual journey and Sharnice has a spectacular one. Can you tell us about your spiritual awakening and your story and how you use your heart as a compass? Wow. Well, yes, my um, awakening into pretty much spirituality, but definitely into channeling was such a unique one and I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it at the time which is why I later created a channeling program for anyone going through those experiences but basically most of my life I felt really insecure and like in looking back it is definitely my heart that was letting me know that like that is not true like that's not who you really are like you not you are not really being that is unworthy but like the feeling was so strong so that's where I feel like my heart sort of was calling me forward because I don't remember how many years ago but I remember at one point saying okay I have to do something about this I'm I believe that there are other people that have gone through experiences of unworthiness and have felt called to seek something you know just seek seek that part of them that does feel like they are enough and they belong so universe please send me <laughs> at least one person who to guide me and i remember taking this workshop called enlightened warrior training camp it was a four-day workshop upstate and it was it was great it was very empowering it was wonderful ultimately it was one of those experiences that was sort of um very powerful in the moment and i could look back to but it didn't necessarily create a shift but what did create a shift is a woman that I met on stage when we were in the little dance breaks in between the, the exercises that they'd set up. I actually met this woman who ultimately became my spiritual coach. And while working with her, she was helping me to understand the way the universe was communicating with me. Like I, I, she didn't specifically, or I didn't specifically say, hey, please help me move into the space of where I feel worthy. 
but that was sort of the, the container of it. And while I was working with her and understanding the way the universe was working with me and, and opening up more to the universe, I started having these unique symptoms, um, which ultimately led to me being at work one day and then my hands flew to the keyboard and started typing. And I'm like, what's going on? And I found out it was this beautiful being. I mean, I'm leaving out lot, lots of the parts. <laughs> because we only have an hour but um ultimately it led me to this place of being able to channel archangels which you might be wondering like okay maybe this is following your heart maybe this isn't following your heart but but the point is it got me to this space where i was able to open up to the divine and they were able to lead me in the direction of my true nature of my true gifts like i believe that everyone can channel because no one is separate from source in my belief. And so I believe that the ability to communicate this beautiful energy that is within, when all, within all of us is available to all of us. But people have different journeys. People are here to experience different aspects of themselves. And so this really led me to a part of myself that my heart very much wanted me to experience. And it's just been delightful. And there've been so many times that trusting this guidance got me outside of my comfort zone and led me more to myself. And one thing I really wanna say is like, I, I believe our heart is, it's definitely so powerful, but it's a representative of, of the divine heart, of, of the ultimate love that there is. And it's within our beings, it's within our bodies. and. And I had a very um, special experience in that when I started channeling angels, you know, they would say, hey, we want you to channel for a group of people. And I was like, oh my God, I've never done that before. That's crazy. So I got very clear guidance. So it's, it's very easy to follow your guidance when it's clear. But also I think that space of, of just desiring to experience an aspect of yourself where you don't feel unworthy or the hurt that is happening to you stops. Like, I think that's a different way that your heart is calling to you. And when you follow these baby steps, whether it's, um, you know, telling someone how you feel or just whatever it is that is, is sort of leading you into a space of greater ease of expression, I think that is following your heart. I definitely think there are those wonderful times where you're like, oh my God, this is my passion. I'm doing this. I 100% know it's my heart. But there are these also, um, there are these heart whispers, which you might not know if it's your heart or not, but it's leading you to feeling better. And I believe that once you get to a certain vibration where you're feeling better, then the divine is able to kind of go, okay, great. So you're on your feet. Why don't you follow why don't you take this course why don't you take this class you know why don't you look into doing this thing that you've always wanted to do that you never knew you wanted to do before so i definitely think there's like heart whispers and baby steps before you get the like the flashing lights that say you're following your heart and the clear guidance yeah it feels like when you follow your yeses because i know for me so many times I've wanted to do things or take classes, but there was always that lack or insecurity. No, I can't do it because no, you know, you find excuses so easily. They're so easy to come by, but it feels like when it's a yes in your heart, I always think of it like the connecting the dots, like life is like a big connecting the dot um, picture. And you just connect a little dot like here to there. And you, then you go on and you connect a little dot over here and connect two dots over here. And the whole time in this life, you're making this beautiful picture and we don't know what it is yet. And when we, like you mentioned that in, Enlightened Warrior workshop that you went to, you followed your heart, you went there, but you met someone there who was a pivotal person in your life. And I feel like that's really the story that I hear over and over is that when you follow your yeses, there's a teacher or a soulmate or a person there or a story or a lesson. And that's where we connect those little dots. And so the more we allow ourselves to say yes to those things, the, the quicker we can fill out that picture, right? Because yes. if we just keep saying no, 
we're going to have to wait to do those connecting the dots eventually, but we can't. So if we can just do like, we don't know why we're taking a random radio theater workshop in Missouri when we're 19 until we're, you know, 42 when we realize that, oh, well, because I'm doing radio interviews and connecting, you know, that's, that's the beauty of life. So when you, I think it's, I think it's the heart space, right? Like when you feel that, yes, it's follow that guidance because that's where you met. I loved how you, what did you say at the whispers of the angels? The Love, heart whispers. The heart whispers. Yeah. Yeah. The heart whispers. Yes. And I would like to offer well, two things or one thing that's an extended thing. So an affirmation that got me through almost all of this was from Louise Hay. It's I'm safe. It's only change. I highly, highly, highly recommend that because when you're following your, these heart whispers, they are leading you outside of what your ego knows you to be and what you know you to be. And that can appear scary to yourself or your ego. And there's that possibility for self-sabotage. Mm. Try not to judge yourself for self-sabotage. It's really just your ego kind of trying to look out for you and saying like, hey, this is who you are. You're not that. I don't know if that's dangerous out there. So saying I'm safe, it's only change. When you do get this heart whisper and you feel excited, but you feel scared and you really want to be able to move through it, that's very powerful. And also it can be really helpful to have at least two or three like memories of when you did successfully move through change we mm -hmm. are freaking train change and transition masters we've gone through so much and we've done so much but usually when there's that moment of you know like oh my goodness here's this thing i can do you know you forget all of that and your awareness is very acutely brought to the fear and the why i don't deserve to do this and this is not who i am so if you can say, I'm safe, it's only change. And then think of like three, you know, two to three times in your life when it's like, okay, well, I lived in this state and then I gave it all up and moved to this state and it worked out really well. You know, when just, just think of a few times when you can actually convince yourself that, wait a second, maybe I'm more than my ego believes me to be at this time period. And that can be really helpful with the heart whispers. And I will say that I remember you teaching me that like a decade ago and it, <laughs> it's safe it's only change has been written in my journal and mantras more Beautiful. people can imagine and I tend to be very protective of my safety I going outside of my comfort zone is very very traumatizing for me and I I have to consciously be like is this fear or excitement <laughs> like I I don't know because they feel so much the same. And so that it's safe. It's only change. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. That, that <laughs> you are so welcome. You're definitely just, I love hearing that that's been huge for you. I, I also, you know, I'm sure Louise Hay knows, but it's also been huge for me as well. It's been huge. It's been like everything. It's been, it's been everything. How do you think that, you know, as we are following our yeses and stepping out of that fear-based and kind of opening ourselves to this new potential within us, how do you think that we as a humanity can continue stepping forward? One thing that's hard as empaths and healers is we look at chaos in the world and it tends to make us think, oh, it's not possible. It is possible. And we, we do have the potential of creating this beautiful, myth, mystical, magical world and reality, not only for ourselves, but others, but it's scary and hard. So what's your advice to people that are feeling a little bit overwhelmed by everything in the world? How can we continue? Well, I think it's helpful to remember a few things or at least be willing to consider a few things. So first of all, there is um, the speed at which information travels is very, very quickly. So with regards to news and what's happening in the world, um, I like to think sometimes of um, the days of the Roman Colosseum when people like kings were throwing people into fight with the animals just for fun. And they loved, you know, 
multiple times a day, these people are just being killed for the pleasure of others. And I, it just makes me think, well, maybe, maybe things aren't getting worse. Maybe we're just more aware of certain things. Like maybe there's just more information uh, or more focus on certain things. Because I do believe that the ascension energies mean that like the vibration is rising around the world, that more people are becoming conscious and more, more heart-based. And like, even if they don't feel like they have the tools to change, like there's the shift in vibration, which is actually rippling out into the to the world and making a change. So I choose to believe, and I actually had to choose to believe this because during lockdown, I was getting lots of information about things and it was just so dark and scary. And I'm like, do I even want to be here on this earth if this is the reality? But then I, I had, you know, I'm sure my angels gave it to me. <laughs> it's like, well, you don't actually know that it's worse now than before. You know, you, you, you are aware of more things than you were before, but that doesn't mean that it's worse. Um, and like I said, it's just very helpful to it's just, well, uh, it is actually helpful to ask your guides to help you refocus on what is possible for you. And I definitely like to think about the fact that there are always beings that are thriving. You know, if you even just think of, you know, the different animals that live in the grass and the, the animal kingdom, like it can be just really helpful to think of different aspects of life that are, are thriving right now. And then when you get to that space, you will notice that your vibration is different because when, when you're in a vibration of fear, you can't create this vibration of love. Like it just, it doesn't work that way. So you need some sort of bridge. So helping to think about the possibility that maybe things aren't worse. Maybe I'm just hearing more of things. And then being able to think of like, wow, you know, there's somewhere where there's this beautiful ray of sun shining on a ladybug on a leaf right now. And, and there's just these, you know, tigers being born and there's just this joy and just this thriving throughout on the planet like that can help you move into a space where you can then either ask your guides or just remember wait a second that's right you know if I believe that life is working for me and that the physical world around me is somewhere reflecting somehow reflecting aspects of my energy field of, of things that are held in my energy field maybe what I'm seeing isn't the truth. Maybe what I'm seeing is a reflection of things inside me. And maybe those things aren't even the truth. Maybe they're just inside me because if I'm willing to believe and if I choose to believe that I am a divine being, then, then there's something here that's like, maybe something's a mismatch and maybe I'm being shown this so I can shift things. So maybe when I'm seeing things going on in the news and this is making me feel a certain way Maybe it's triggering something from an alternate life, or maybe it's triggering something from what I heard in my childhood. Maybe it's an opportunity for me to move into a greater space of love about these peoples or about this situation, or what could the, the divine gift in the situation be? And I think from there, you can begin to go, all right, well, regardless of whatever I think the gift could be, what would I like to see? And let me move into that space. And when you hold that vibration, oh my God, it totally affects people. It totally affects people. Like you see someone and you smile because you've got the space in your heart of creativity, of belief, of awareness that you're a divine being and that the beings that the people that you're looking at are also divine beings in different areas of their journey. Like it affects you and it affects how you radiate and connect with other people. And sometimes you see people smile because you're in this place of joy. Sometimes you don't, but if you really trust that everything is energy and that when you have a, a powerful vibration, you're influencing other people. And if you believe that positive vibrations cancel, you know, thousands of lower vibrations, it just shifts who you are and how you be in the world. And so I think that's like a, a helpful, powerful way to end up creating the space of, of love in the world. So beautiful. Yes. So well said. One of the things that you mentioned is ascension symptoms and rising and ascension. So a lot of people don't know what's happening. There are a lot of people, and you know, there might be people who are watching this right now who are just clicking on it, like we mentioned before, as a little breadcrumb that their guides are bringing them to. What is happening right now? What is ascension? What are ascension symptoms? 
So ascension is basically the rising of vibrations that is occurring on earth right now. I don't know if that was said eloquently, but, but just imagine, um, uh, like I'm just seeing like a, a ball, like if you were to imagine the earth kind of on a string and uh, 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 like, or just imagine this totality of all there is, there's just this, all that there is. And then you move into the space of all that there is wanting to experience itself as matter. So since it it's not matter or it is all things, it moves into this, it's like, okay, well, let's create this, this illusory situation where we can imagine that we're these things. And so as nothing is static, everything is in motion. You have um, this experience of earth being one of the expressions of matter uh, that, that manifests. And there's a period of when it has this high vibration and it's sort of like descending fully into the material form. And like, there's this high vibration and you can even think of it as like a beings coming through the fallopian tube. You know, there's just this, this high vibration of the awareness of all there is. And then as it's getting lower and lower and lower and materializing, it's getting denser and denser and, and feeling further and further away from source. And so the vibration can be very, very heavy, very, um, there's lots of fear. There's lots of, you know, why was I separated from source? Because there's also the veil of forgetfulness that happens. But then after a certain period, then there's sort of a, a return to the light. There's a return of awareness of like a raising in consciousness, a rising in vibration. And so um, my belief is that we're in this phase where we're rising in vibration. And, you know, this is something that could take billions of years, or I don't even, I don't even know, time isn't really real, but the period that we're in right now is just a period of, of, you know, more and more people being aware that, you know, maybe what I'm experiencing isn't all there is, you know, maybe I have more agency in what happens in my life than I thought I did. You know, maybe there's something, maybe there's something to the experiences that I'm having. Maybe I actually can align with energies that create that. Maybe I'm not alone. Maybe I'm loved, you know, beyond belief. Maybe I'm worthy of loving myself. And, and so this is what's happening right now. And along with this process, there's a lot of the denser energy that our body's been holding that is also shifting. And so this is what's causing the ascension symptoms. So uh, if you were to imagine uh, like, uh, like a glass, um, a tank. So like, say you have a tank where you have, I guess it's a fish tank. <laughs> I'm like a tank where you have fish, um, you know, and maybe there's like a lot of, uh, you know, the heavy stones at the bottom because they're heavier. And then for whatever reason, maybe you're able to just uh, like, I don't think this is possible, but if you can insert like helium underneath the the rocks like for whatever reason there's something that's a very light yet very very powerful that is coming underneath these rocks and it's sort of rising the vibration so they they're coming to the surface so if your awareness is on the surface at some point you know you're going to see all of these rocks you're going to just feel all of this energy as it's moving to be released and that's what's causing a lot of the ascension symptoms and sometimes people are getting more headaches than usual. Um, sometimes people are maybe seeing things potentially out of their third eye that's awakening, like they might see things out of the corner of their eye. They might feel discomfort in their bones. I mean, there's just all these different things that they might feel because everybody's body is different. But if you hold on to the belief that everything is working for you, that alone shifts you from a fear by vibration to a vibration of possibility, which is really gonna make everything a lot easier. If you drink water when your body needs it, if you rest when your body needs it, if you ask your heart or your inner child, hey, what, what do you need? You know, I love you. What can I do for you? If you do that on a regular basis and care for yourself, it can really help you move through this process faster. And I really believe that people that are sort of experiencing ascension symptoms now will have a shorter period of them than people did um, you know, a little while ago. Yeah, I think that what we went through 10, 15 years ago, people are going through, well, it took me a decade. I'm now seeing people move through in like six months to a year. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that that's part of the journey. Like 
on the spiritual journey, we're all on the same path. And some of us are a little further ahead. We put our, our hands back and we put, and we're just constantly, you know, kind of bringing all of us on. You were the, one of the hands that guided me. You activated me in light language. And light language is very important to me and who I am. It's important to my healing. It's important to, it's really important to me. And I resisted it so much for many, many years. You were with me on that journey where I was so afraid that I was really making myself so much more dense because it was in that resistance that I was intellectually open to it. I could process it in my brain, but I couldn't really allow myself to do it. Or, and it was there for so long. And um, you absolutely helped guide me through that. And you do that with other people. So you, can you talk a little bit about how you help people and what yes. you do? Because it's so important. You're amazing. Oh, thank you so much. First, I do want to speak to the fact that you said you, you had the you could feel it in you, but there was a fear. And I just want to say that is 100% normal because uh, we are used to, to being the only beings that are speaking through our body. So um, when you're speaking light language and I teach your soul's light language, so it's, it's still an aspect of you, but we're, we don't have a habit of allowing other energies that we're not conscious of speaking through us so i just want to put that out for anyone else who is maybe feeling you know a, a, an awareness that light language wants to come through but just this sort of like uh uh no i just you know like they have sort of this these competing desires because there's part of their body that just has this fear so what i do is i i All right, everyone. It seems like we're having some technical difficulty where Sharnice was frozen. So let's just take a moment and all do a deep breath. Let's do three collective deep breaths in and out. And she will come back on and all will be well. When energy gets really high, and we're talking about really important things like this it's very easy for technology to sometimes warp in and out so just three collective deep breaths ground your energy down there you are we took three <laughs> collective deep breaths and we were waiting for you we held space continue beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> i'm not sure what happened i was just talking it's like it, they're gone um so one of the things i like to do is just really create a safe space for people to connect with their soul's light language. So your soul is an extended aspect of you and loves you so much. And so for me, it feels like just a very safe way into light language. And I really have you do it in a way where you feel safe and I just give you lots of tools to create your own safety. And then in the activation uh, that's, that's in the class, it's just also a very safe experience as well that's overlit by your divine beings, by your own I am presence, just to ensure that everything unfolds in a way that serves you. And then later in my level two class, we speak, you learn to speak um, the light language of dragons and unicorns and the sun and you know your galactic family. And, and the reason that I think that's important, I like that you said it's important. Um, it has to do with the fact that 
when you speak, uh, when you speak English, I think sometimes it's very possible to speak one thing, even though you're thinking something else. So there's like a competing frequency. And then there's also the frequency attached to the words themselves that they were that were created. So I guess you want to call it the etymology of words. Like there are a lot of words that we use now that if you were thinking about the, the origins, you're like, I don't know if I want to keep using that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but you do, you know, and, and also a lot of the vibration has been shifted. But when you're speaking light language, you're really just speaking this pure, unadulterated frequency that is not influenced by your ego. It's not influenced by societies and languages at all. And it's very beautiful. It's very heart-based. And I do think it's important to, to, if you feel called to, to activate that because it really just has you move into a space where you unplug a little bit from the third dimension because you're like, oh my God, the sound is coming through me, you know, and you focus on the feeling because it's very healing. It can align your chakras. I mean, it's just very, very powerful. And, and again, it's, it's yours. Like it's an aspect of you. It's, it's your soul. And it's, it's one of the gifts that I think is unfolding right now at this point in time in the, the ascension. Like I think with the vibrations that are like flooding everyone over time, I believe we're going to be uh, experiencing basically more and more gifts that we have that we didn't know we had. We're going to discover more aspects of ourselves that, that we didn't know. And, and right now it feels like the one that most people are awakening into is light language. And it's very beautiful. It's, it's yours. You know, it doesn't have to sound like anyone else's. Um, no one else has to understand it. Sometimes people can understand it, or you might be able to understand it as well at some point, but it's just beautiful. And it is, I, I believe, like I said, very important to, to speak because it can move you into greater alignment with your soul, which just helps. It just helps a lot. <laughs> it just makes a lot of things better and easier and more wonderful and help, and it can help you shift your perspective. Um, I know that you also do, you know, um, sound baths as well. And the one thing that I think about light language that's so important is that it's sound frequency. And that sometimes if in our, and I'm speaking from a fear-based perspective of my past, in our brains, we can think what is this and what is that? And is this wrong or is this right? But if we just think about it as healing sounds, right? Yes. Voice, our voices are an instrument that we have been gifted with since the beginning of time. Before there were flutes, there was the voice. And then there was the drum and people were using their own bodies as percussion. And so our bodies are made to express sound frequencies for joy, for love, for laughter, for celebration. And, you know, it can even be, you know, war. I mean, that's the idea in my head. But I mean, if you think about it, it was the drum beat. It was, it was this. Sound and voice is part of our DNA. It's part of our ancestry. It's part of our lineage. And if we can just allow the sounds to come through freely without judging them. And that's what I had to work on so much was getting rid of the judgment of it and kind of just looking at it as sound. In theater, one of the things you do is you do little scenes where you talk in like garble language or you know gibberish. And I was always really good at that because I was too. <laughs> and that was fine to me because I was able to assign that in my logic brain as it's just sound. But when the, my light language started to come up, I start, it felt powerful. Mm. And the power frightened me mm -hmm. because it wasn't of me. But it, it Room. was of you <laughs> but you didn't know that <laughs> but I didn't know that I kind of knew that but it's like we're always afraid of our own power and our own light and so much of our life is kind of about like being like no I'm contained I'm good I'm normal I can fit in and I don't mean to put you on the spot but I will say that listening to other people speak white language 
is an activator. I know that you would speak light language in your workshops, on your calls, on your Facebook page. And every time you did, I would feel it in my heart and I would feel it's safe. I can do that because I could get nothing but love from you. When you, when you hear someone else do it, you can only feel that frequency of love, which helps the logical brain get over the fear of what is this? What is this? 100%. So, would you be able to kind of do some light language for us? Oh, sure. I would love to. All right. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I did no, not. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that my light, one thing that's different, I will just mention that my light language is very different than Sharnice's. And at first that made me feel less than like, oh, well, maybe mine is wrong because mine isn't like Sharnice's. But like she said, this is our soul language. Our souls yes. are not the same. Like I could understand in my heart space, a lot of what she said, which was just pure love. I didn't necessarily get all the logic of it. And just like mine, and, and by the way, it will change sometimes. So don't be afraid if it's not always the same or if it doesn't sound the same or if it doesn't sound like someone else's. It's beautiful no matter what. Yes, and I just want to share, like you said, it can change, which is fine. But the main thing is you want it to feel good. So if you yeah. notice anything not feeling um, good, then definitely stop. And then I really want to speak to what you said about your voice being in your DNA because it's so powerful. And I just want to, to, to just really add something that I think your brain is going to like. So for when, when children are born, um, it might be in the, just in the wild, it might be anywhere, but there's something about the DNA and the voice of that particular child that triggers the parent so that the parent will know that the child is in need. So if the child is crying, then the parent will hear that voice. And it's not just like, oh, I'm familiar with that voice. Like it literally triggers something in them specifically. So they feel obligated to look after the child. So there is literally like some DNA magic <laughs> in there. Yeah. So, so yeah, just, and, and you, your own voice for you is pretty much more powerful than, than any of the voices out there. Like there's, there's also something about when you hear your own voice. So I just wanted to put that out there because I love all the stuff about the voice. And yeah, let me do some light language. So let's see, I would love for you all to just close your eyes and then just take a few deep breaths at your own pace. And then as you're breathing in and breathing out, I'd love for you just to bring your awareness to just above your crown chakra. And we're actually just going to ground your energy by directing your awareness from the top of your crown chakra and moving energy down through your third eye, through your throat chakra, to your heart chakra, to your solar plexus chakra, through your sacral chakra, through your root chakra, and down through your hips, thighs, knees, shins, ankles, below the soles of your feet, and then just see a beautiful just beautiful set of roots slowly extending down out of the bottom of your feet and maybe even out of your sternum, just going down into Mother Gaia. And then they begin to move faster and faster and faster, wider and faster towards the beautiful core of Mother Gaia. And then feel free to see this core in whatever way feels right to you. You might see it as crystalline. You might see it as beautiful center of lava, whatever works for you. And just wrap your roots three times around this beautiful positive core of Mother Gaia. And while we're here, let's just ask her to support and ground our physical body, 
our emotional body, our mental body, and our spiritual body. And of course she does. And let's just give her a thank you and allow yourself to move into this peaceful state of receptivity as I speak light language. Ana kiala a yaka a inya salaka a yanala a e yaha ana kiala tisyanakala e ya anala aka e sialataka anya 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 e akalata anya kasara chakapala Inya alakana anakaya atalaka, Asia nakala ana achaka, Ana sakala ana yakana ala, Asiala ana kia talaka, Iana kachataka, Misiala apana akapa, Ayala achanakata, Yasana kapa yala kana, Iana kapa, Mia chara kala ana sialaka ana chataka, Iana alaka chara, Asia nakata, Iana ala ana yakala achakata. Iana kono osokono lo okono chono kopo miala akana iana kachana ala ana kasana akana o ya ala iana ala iana la a iana la a iana la a iya kana jataka iana ala aka eana la eana la mesia kala a ana kachata iya Ia, ia, ia na ala, asia, inia, aleka, anata a, ia, ia. Now, whenever you're ready, just begin to bring your awareness back. Slowly, slowly to your physical body. Feel free to move your fingers around. You can wiggle your toes around, your shoulders, your neck. Take a few more deep breaths to really anchor your breath back into your body. And then whenever you're ready, Feel free to open your eyes. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. So there was so much love in it, and I could feel actually my higher self kind of almost coming out of my body to witness it. To yeah. so it felt very much so like a crown awakening for mm. what a gift for everyone who is watching this. Beautiful. So beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. The one of the messages that uh, came through, it's funny, it came through in French a little bit because I love speaking French. Um, and it was tout est possible, and like everything is possible, everything is possible, everything is possible. Um, mm -hmm. if you can take your awareness from sort of the 3D reality to some degree as as being the limit to what's possible um and you can, and if you can allow yourself to align more with that that divinity and and you can even feed yourself you can even ask your guides to help you really get the the, the largeness of like wait so how did I, how was I formed from source? Like what are all of the miraculous and amazing things that were almost impossible that had to happen in, for, in order for me to incarnate here? Like if mm -hmm. you can start, if they can assist you with that, or if you can start thinking about that, then that can help you move into the space of everything being possible. And then when you start to believe that everything is possible from your heart space, then everything is possible. And then mm -hmm. you can, have even more fun. <laughs> wow. I mean, thank you. What a beautiful gift. It was such a gift. And you, I think you should be charging so much more than you do 
So I'm going to mm. encourage every single person that's watching this to go to Sharnice's website and mm. sign up for her course and in light language. And also you have these amazing like one day workshops that you've been doing for years where you channel the archangels and you have these messages coming in. So to be able to just be in the frequency of such high energy as you're channeling mm. them is really such a gift. And for those people that are, you know, needing support, wanting more love in their life, there's nothing that's going to give you more love than being around the angels and the archangels and speaking your own soul language. So it will give you that kind of support that, that they're all looking for. And you also have some interesting things that I kind of want to touch on, which is you're also a professional organizer. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tell, yes. Us a little, tell us a little bit about, so like the one thing is that people struggle with, I know I do, it's 3D and 5D. How do we make this work? And so you're, you're this professional organizer. You've got this other life. Tell us a little bit about that because that's, by the way, pretty cool too. It's all the same thing. It's all energy. I love professional organizing because you're getting rid of people's um, like stagnant energy, which is usually clutter in their homes. You're helping them deal with that. And their home is an extension of their, their selves. So for me, even though, um, you know, I'm helping people get rid of clutter in their homes, for me, it's basically a way to help people clear energy from their lives and bring them into, you know, greater alignment. If maybe they're not into angels, you know, like I literally, the same prayer that I do before my, when I channel um, archangels once, once a month, I do before my organizing sessions. And I usually will guide people through, um, visualizations before the session starts to help them get in touch with the the ideal energy that they want to have in their home so for me it's literally two different ways of basically ultimately helping the person feel better and feel like they have more control over their lives and just be more empowered so it's the same thing but i love helping people declutter and i'm just um I just taught a mindful organizing class for Uncommon Goods and my last one, or I might be doing more, but my last one is coming up on the 14th, at least for now. And it's just basically a two hour class about like how to, just how to approach your, the clutter in your home from, from a different space, like a space of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So like for me, it really is just the same thing. It's just a different way of like getting at the energy in your world, because like we said before, or like I believe, you know, your external world is a manifestation of what is active in your energy field. It doesn't have to be true. It can be from other, you know, ancestors, other generations, just it, it's just in there and you need to see that it's in there so you can deal it. And it can suck when you see it, you know, because you're like, oh my God, is this me? I failed again. Why do I do this? And it's like, you don't realize it's like, you know, you had an uncle with a gambling habit or, you know, you, you just don't know what energy is active in you. And I believe that your home, which is an extension of you, is also just a beautiful guide or map of what you have going on in you. So I get to help people address that. I get to hold their hands, like kind of in a different way, but in the same way as when I'm channeling for people or when I'm teaching people how to channel. And, mm. and it just feels lovely because people feel better immediately. You know, it's like you, you feel better and your, your home feels lighter and, and you feel that in your being. I mean, that's why feng shui is like so powerful. I mean, feng shui, usually, usually you think about the fact that there's, I think it's called a bagua map and it's like this area is for success and this area is for romance. I mean, it's just very clear from the get-go that your home is connected mm -hmm. to your being and your life. And so I, I love, I love doing it. And like right now I'm actually just holding, um, like before the pandemic, I used to do it all in person and I've done it a few times since then, but right now I'm holding sort of like group accountability sessions where we declutter together and I start with the visualization beforehand. And I actually work with the quantum field before the session to like, help clear stagnant energy to make it easier for them. Oh, so wow. What a, well, that's amazing. And so 
people who are watching this, even if they don't live in New York City with you, they could still work with you and you could help them clear their home. Wow. Yes, that's, yes. That's All amazing. of my offerings are online right now. So if you want to learn how to channel archangels if you want to learn how to speak light language if you want to organize like it's all online so regardless of where you are we can we can do it and when you clear out the old you make room for the new so like for me depression i've always suffered from depression and when i start getting depressed i can usually tell when my depression's taking a turn for the worse because my house starts to look bad <laughs> And that's, and that's when I have to go, okay, this is an emergency. We have to clean, we have to declutter, we have to do this. And that has become a signal for me throughout my life. Um, sometimes bigger than others, but um, it, that is an important thing. So if anyone is struggling too, if you don't know where to start, mm. maybe just start with the organizing because when you can clear out the stagnant energy, when you can make room in your physical space and look around and feel a sense of peace, when you look around your space, that's when you can start connecting in and really working more with your guides. And I am just going to put this out there that a lot of times it get, turns into a cycle. We look around, our house is in this or it's not that. And we get depressed and we get angry and it just cycles. And so we just freeze. It's that fright, the flight, fright, freeze syndrome. And we do it not necessarily in times of emergency, but it can be in our own home. We freeze. We don't do anything. And people give us stuff and we don't know how to handle our own boundaries. And so it builds up. And I'm speaking from the, as the daughter of a hoarder, my mom has mm. a hoarding issue that, there is absolutely a freedom in letting go and it's yes. hard to let go but when you do when you can open yourself up for that space and give at the, and to just let it go to not have to plan it or organize it or know where it goes or give it away or give it to the right person that's a gift that you can just open up in your soul and your guides will be working through you and i did not I think that is just so amazing, Sharnice, that you do that because I can see how profound that can be in helping people. And I, first of all, just want to put out to the universe that I want so much abundance for you. I Aww. want so much happiness for you because you have been giving to this world mm -hmm. for so long. And mm -hmm. you share, you, you really, really do anchor in the light for humanity and mm -hmm. you are a beacon you just shine and you are beautiful and so I want to recognize that in you because I think sometimes we get caught and we we forget we forget mm -hmm. how important and how much you've helped me and mm -hmm. what a dear friend you are to me and um all of the different ways that we can support each other in this spiritual path and in this spiritual ascension. I just think it's a, if you want to work with someone who's been on this path for a while and who's a beautiful soul, please work with Sharni Spruel. <laughs> Her website is sharnispruel.com. And will you have information about your organizing and your channeling information on there? Is it all on the same page or do they need to go to different places? It's all on the same page, but I'll also say if you go to my link tree, which is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E forward slash Sherni Sproul, C-H-E-R-N-I-S-E-S-P-R-U-E-L-L. -L. I'm realizing that it's on your Facebook page, so I didn't need to spell my name, but, but I do update my link tree with um, what the things that I'm doing, and you can definitely access the... Um, my organizing offerings from, from my link tree. And also, I just want to thank you. You said the most beautiful words about me and I didn't even get to say thank you so much. So thank you, thank you, dear heart. I have just treasured our meeting and I actually want to say we met um, at Natalie 
Bertolt's, um, I think it was the workshop outside. I think we were on a hill in Central Park on a sunny, That's beautiful where I day. Bring you to on the hill. And I just love it. Like it's just the most beautiful place to meet someone. And, and yeah, so I just wanted to point that out. But just thank you so much for your for your lovely heart and for always wanting to share about like following your heart. That's always been your thing from ever since I've known you. It's like you want people to know how to follow their heart. So and that's just that's really part of wonderful. my mission is to awaken <laughs> that in myself and others. And I get genuinely ecstatic when I see someone following their heart. And I often, you know, it's harder for your own self, but I'm one of the things that I feel as my mission is I can see where someone needs to go in their path and to follow their heart. And as an artist, for me, it's usually in follow your following your art somehow. So following mm. your heart and following your art is very connected. But yeah, I, I, t I mean, I think it was 2005, maybe that we've met, we've known each other for, <laughs> I mean, like, I have been on this journey with you so long. And you were one of those people that I, I met. And it was like, time kind of stopped for a second it was like this is a soul mm. part. like like you are yeah. a soul like you are one of my soul sisters you are in this I am in this life with you so much <laughs> yes 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 I definitely remember that it was just like and we're friends <laughs> and we're connected and we're not going to be not unconnected in this life so exactly yeah, beautiful exactly. um I did remember one thing I wanted to share is if you go to my Linktree page down at the very bottom, I have a free uh, recording um, that I'd like to offer everyone. It's a, it's basically a channeled recording that I did for abundance, for financial abundance. So if you just go there, it's at the very, very bottom, click that. You do need to put your email in, but honestly, you can just opt out of adding your email address if you don't want to. It'll still let you download it. I mean, sorry, I didn't say that. Yes, give your email. Um, I'm gonna link, uh, I'll link that on uh, the Facebook page. And so that okay. way people, can, so um, just look in the in the comment section and you'll see the link and everything there for you. So that way um, you can you can do that and take advantage of it. Your guided meditations are beautiful. They've always mm. been stunning. So, um, and you. you guys luckily got a taste of it in that beautiful light language uh, session. And um Again, thank you so much for joining this radio show Zoom thing. I don't quite know what to call it. I haven't quite <laughs> hard as a compass. Um, next week, I will have uh, a new guest on. So I'm trying to do this every Monday. It's kind of my new, uh, I'm kind of putting it out to guides that um, because this is what I love to do every Monday, I'm going to be interviewing someone new. So um, if you want to be on the show contact me uh, if you have any questions you know get in touch but definitely right now go to shernesefruel.com <laughs> and go to her link tree page and get that free put your email in and get, <laughs> and get her abundance um uh audio because that i mean i i can attest to it it would be beautiful and i would highly recommend watching the light language session where she did that over a couple times it was such a beautiful activation mm. that if you resonated with it that's a yes in your soul that mm. you are a channel and that you are on this path and that you should take Shernice's class and work with her and listen to it as many times as you can definitely the mm. more you listen to light language it washes over you and it will activate you Yes, beautiful. Thank you so much, Paige. It's been my pleasure. Oh, I love you. Many blessings. <laughs> I bye love bye. you too. Bye.